Hi, I'm Lucy Baker, the Senior Communications Manager at here at Guilford Press. I'm joined today by Dr. Lucia Stapa to discuss her new book, Imagery and Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. Dr. Stopa, thank you so much for being here. Can you give us an example of a mental image? Yeah, thank you for inviting me, Lucy. So the simplest example I can give is, I'd ask you to imagine a lemon. Just shut your eyes and imagine a lemon. And you can start imagining the shape, the color, the feel of it. You can even imagine cutting it open and putting it to your nose and imagining the smell and you might find that you're salivating. So that's just a very simple mental image. A more complex mental image would be if you think about an event that's been important to you that you've gone to, it might be a children's party or a wedding or a work event. And when you think about it, you often will find you have images popping into your mind. And those could be visual images, but they could also be things like hearing the noises if it's a children's party, hearing the children giggling or smelling the candles on the cake, those kinds of things. Those are all examples of mental images. Oh, great, thank you. Why are mental images so important to emotional well-being? Okay, well, there's a number of reasons for this. So first of all, our memories and our lives are the way in which we tell ourselves the sort of story of our life and what's happened. So our autobiographical memories are full of images. So the example I gave just a moment ago of the children's party. Right. So if you're thinking about positive memories and you're having positive images, you'll have good feelings. But if you're thinking about negative images, say a row with a partner or a difficult interaction at work, and you have images of that, then that will bring about bad and difficult feelings often. Now, the other thing we know is that imagery has a very strong and powerful relationship with emotion. So if you're having images of something upsetting that's happened, you're going to get even stronger emotions than if you're just sort of mulling it over in your mind and thinking about it more verbally. Yeah, that's so interesting and so true. In cognitive behavioral therapy, Therapists uh, customarily help patients cope with distressing thoughts and beliefs, um, but you're saying that it's equally valuable to focus on mental images, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's not just equally valuable. I think it's essential. Yeah, so interesting. Um, can you provide an example of an imagery intervention that therapists might use with a client? Sure. So let's think about something called imagery rescripting. And this is where the therapist focus on an upsetting memory from the person's past. Now those upsetting memories are often linked to beliefs that people have about themselves. So let's take something like being bullied at school. Children who are bullied at school often develop a lot of problems. They may see themselves as inferior or worthless or unable to get on with other children. And what happens is when, when people have developed disorders and they've had these beliefs about themselves for a long time, those early memories that they have that started that belief off, they don't kind of get updated. So they don't start reevaluating those thoughts. Now, imagery rescripting is a technique where we go back into the memory and we examine it through looking at images of the memory from different perspectives. So we would typically go back in and ask the person to describe what it was like as a child on one example of being bullied. But then we'd ask them to go back into that memory as their adult self and ask them to do something to help the child in the memory. And that shift of context where they see themselves as an adult in that memory often leads to a really big change in their belief. So instead of feeling, I was weak, I was pathetic, they might think, actually, those other children were really out of order and really horrible. There wasn't really anything wrong with me. That's just what I believed at the time. That's only a partial example. It's a bit more complicated than that, but I think it illustrates you know, how powerful imagery can be. Yeah, absolutely. That's very interesting. And I think it's a great example. Um, just one final question. In, in addition to challenging negative images, um, can the techniques in your book actually be used to encourage like positive views of the world and of yourself. Absolutely, and I think one of the things that's really been exciting in cognitive therapy has been the understanding that we don't just need to work with negative things, we need to also work with building up positive things. So a couple of very quick examples. 
Um, one thing that therapists can do is work with people to create an image of a safe place. This might be a real place in the past, say a grandparent's house or a, a holiday at a beach where the person felt really safe and everything was very, you know, incredibly bright and vibrant, or it could be an imaginary place. And therapists can use that to help people to then face distressing emotions or use techniques such as imaginal reliving, which is a technique for, used in trauma work where you ask someone to go through the trauma in their imagination. And then when you've done that, you can come back to the safe place. So that's one positive image. It also helps to kind of allow the person to, their, their emotions to sort of settle down and they, they feel safer, which is an essential part of therapy. Another example is, which is more experimental, is accessing, deliberately thinking of a positive autobiographical memory. So if you're socially anxious, thinking of a memory in which you felt confident with people, you felt that you were feeling self-assured, you weren't your usual anxious self, and then focusing on the image in that, and then using that image in situations that you find difficult, deliberately calling up that image to sort of counteract the negative image that people habitually have. So those are a couple of examples, there's many more, but I think the, the work on positive imagery is as important as the work that we're doing on negative imagery. I think those are such great examples. And I, I think I will use that one of imagining myself in a positive social situation when I'm right. feeling anxious. That's really great. Yeah. Right. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with me. And again, your new book, which we are so excited to have published is called Imagery in Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lucy.